Hello everyone and welcome to this video about filtering water and purification. Now before we get into what filtering water actually does, if we don't have any of these fancy gadgets like a Life Straw or a Sawyer filter or Aquamira, um, I want to talk about what exactly filtering does. Filtering takes out the bacteria and parasites like Cryptosporidium, but it's important to understand how filtering works, what all of these different materials do, so we can make sure that we're getting the stuff out that we want to get out. Now, before I get into this, I have a little disclaimer here. Um, because our water is treated, we, we haven't built up the immunity to these microorganisms like our ancestors did or somebody who does this on a daily basis. This can be done, but usually not without, you know, getting sick once or twice. Um, use your own judgment on water sources, but just know that Giardia and Cryptosporidium can cause serious illness depending on the amount that you ingest or how contaminated that water is. Like I said, we can build up immunity to certain levels of these bacteria, but it's always better to be safe than sorry, in my opinion. So this is just a recommendation of these techniques, and it's just meant to give you some ideas. So use these at your own risk. So let's go into a little bit about how filtering works. Filtering is measured in microns. Um, a live straw filters down to a point up to about 0 0.02 microns. And a Sawyer mini filter filters down to about 0 0.01 microns. And the way this works is the water is forced through hollow fibers, which contain pores less than 0 0.02 or 0 0.01 in microns um, across, depending on the filter. Now, this is great, but we, we need to know how big these microns, or not these microns, these parasites and bacteria are, right? So we can, we can take those out. Giardia is about 8 to 12 microns in size, so these filters will, will get, those, go, get those out pretty good. Cryptosporidium is about 4 to 6 microns in size, so these filters should have no problem with that either. But bacteria and like, and like uh, Salmonella and E. coli, they're about 0 0.02 to 0 0.4 microns in size. So these filters should get, get all of that stuff out. But the viruses in water, depending on where you get your water, they're around 0 0.004 microns to 1 micron in size. So filtering is not going to get most of the viruses or you, your chances are, you know, your, your odds are very good, I suppose. So um, water, it's important to note that filtering doesn't remove these so or, or chemicals or salt from the water. So, you know, we need to make sure and purify that water somehow. So basically, your filter needs to be small enough in microns to catch these harmful bacteria. So let's talk about purifying water real quick. Boiling water is probably the best way to purify your water, but we need to keep in mind that if water is in short supply, we need to be careful about boiling that water off. So you know, when you're boiling, remember that water temperatures at about 160 degrees um, will kill pathogens within about 30 minutes. Uh, water temperatures above 185 degrees will kill the pathogens in, in a few minutes. And water is, it, it's 212 is the boiling temperature of water. So in the time it takes for water to reach its boiling point, all these pathogens will, will probably be killed. And at higher altitudes, you're going to need to boil it for longer because water has a, a, a different boiling point. But after you, just after your water, just after your drinking water reaches that boiling roll, the water is probably going to be okay to drink. Um, like I said, at higher elevations, I usually do mine about 30 seconds, but you don't want to boil it too long because, because then you've, you've got that water, that, that valuable drinking water that's kind of just evaporating. Now, there are also a few purifiers like iodine and bleach and chlorine tablets and even some stuff called potassium permanganate that I don't have in here that, that also have some first aid properties to it as well. And I'll do a, a little bit about that later in the course. But, you know, Aquamira tablets um, are, are pretty good. That's what I choose to use because they're a tablet. It's, it's you know, the... Uh, the, the iodine is, you know, they tell you a certain amount of drops and it's, it's you know, how much is a drop really, you know. Um, so it's a lot easier just to take a tablet, throw it in, um, how you know, read the directions, make sure you know exactly what's on these. But it's a lot easier for me to use a tablet, but they both work. 
and and bleach works as well and this is another one be really careful about how much you use and make sure you're using the correct amounts and i've got the picture on here that's got the two different bottles because one is correct and one is not and you you want to use just straight bleach you don't want to use anything that's scented or anything like that so um and also distilling water can be a little more time intensive but that's going to give you the purest water because what it's doing is it's evaporating and it's taking that water and, you know, taking just the, the pure, pure water. Now, this is this picture right here is just a, a pot with a lid upside down and a coffee cup hooked up to it. But you can take this. This is the kind of the idea unless you want to, you know, a, if you have a moonshine still or something like that, that would work, too. But not all of us have those. Or this is the same same principle as a solar still out in the wilderness where you dig a hole and you put a piece of plastic over the top and, and kind of weight that down in the center and let that water drip in there. So, you know, purification is always the best way, but you want to make sure and filter everything first because that gets the the chunks and stuff out, you know, the stuff that that's going to maybe the maybe it makes the water taste different or maybe you just don't want to be eating, you know, be insect parts and all of that stuff or moss or stuff like that. So, um Next, we have this this chart right here that I'll leave in the the notes as well. Um, I'll leave a download for this because it's pretty interesting. But and it's it's looking at it the first time and just kind of like a what what is all this stuff? But if you look at the top right, it gives you the the key to what all this stuff is. A dash or a minus sign means it's not effective at all. And then you've got one plus for low effectiveness, and it goes all the way up to four pluses for high effectiveness. And you can see on this chart that that boiling water. Um, and you know, this says a minute and, you know, I'm, I'm good with 30 seconds, but if you need to go a minute and it makes you feel comfortable, do that. Uh, but this says it gives it four pluses and filtration, you know, when you're trying to get rid of cryptosporidium, here's the one I'm reading filtration. It gives it three pluses, which is, is high effectiveness, not, not a, you know, very high effectiveness and nothing is a hundred percent. This stuff is kind of like birth control. I suppose it's 99.9 .9 when you boil it. Uh, but there's always that chance. Now, and you can see that chlorine and iodine, or yeah, iodine and chlorine don't get rid of cryptosporidium. Um, chlorine dioxide, dioxide, the aquamere tablets, those are, you know, one plus to two pluses. So they're, you know, pretty low effectiveness for cryptosporidium. But if you use the a combination of filtration and disinfectant, meaning you boil it, it's going to get rid of all of that stuff. And, and again, you can see down here with the viruses, if you go all the way down, that filtration doesn't get rid of the viruses, and, but boiling will, boiling and purifying. So, um, so that's, that's basically it on this. And like I said, I'll leave a, a, a link to this so you can kind of check it out. And I'll, I'll do all the notes and I'll leave a, a, there's a download below this video that, that has all the notes for this, this video in it. Okay, so let's go in, into let's start with what makes up a filter and why a filter works there there are different levels of filters these um these filters that that we can buy from the store are a little bit different but from this but i'll go through what this is and then we'll explain activated charcoal and all that you know it, it really depends on the way you want to do it a filter doesn't have to be set up this exact way but it's important to have these ingredients that are in this filter and, and kind of set up in a way where they're going to be useful. You don't want the charcoal on top and then the sand towards the bottom. You want gravel on top. And what gravel does is it will catch out. It, it'll catch all of that large sediment, you know, the maybe the some of the insect parts or if it's got moss or weeds or any kind of stuff like that. It'll catch that before it gets into uh, the finer particles, which are the sand. And if you take out these larger particles first, that that sand is going to filter better. It's not going to be jammed up or clogged up with all of that, the big chunks of stuff. And then what the what this will finally do is when it gets down to the filter, charcoal traps or absor absorbs um, other carbon-based materials. So it's going to kind of finish that process of filtering your water. And then what you can do in between these layers, and like I said, this is, you know, practice different ways or, or look at different ways you can do your filter, but you can use plants or grass or anything like that to keep these layers separated so they don't get all mixed in and... Um, 
it, it just makes it a, a little bit better and, and even catches some of those, you know, some of the stuff that the filter might have missed. And then finally at the bottom, you can use, a, you know, a coffee filter, a piece of clothing. Um, and, and as far as clothing goes, you could even make one of these filters out of a pant leg. Uh, you know, you, you'd have to sacrifice a pair of pants, but if you needed to filter your water, that, that might turn out to be something that, that you need to do. But like I said, the bottom doesn't necessarily have to be closed off with cheesecloth or anything like that. Um, you should try to because it still catches the, the remaining stuff. But um, even if you just have rocks or something that, that is going to make sure that this gravel or the sand or this charcoal doesn't end up in your water. So that's kind of basically what, what a filter what a filter is is kind of made of and like i said you can use your some different ideas it doesn't have to be exactly one two three you can have as many different levels as you want you can have your charcoal chopped up really really fine um, the the benefit of charcoal i guess i'll go into that a little bit and explain what why charcoal is so important and charcoal is you know you can get a fire and and get the charcoal from the wood but you got to make sure it's not the ashy, the white ashy stuff. It's got to be the dark charcoal. And then crunch it up really good. And the more you crunch it up, the more surface area it's going to have. And the more little areas for for the the charcoal to trap these, these um, carbon-based impurities. But it doesn't catch stuff like um, sodium or nitrates or anything like that. They'll just pass right through that. But an activated filter, you'll hear this all the time with these store-bought filters, an activated filter just means that, that it's a filter that, or, or the charcoal has been kind of changed um, somehow. I'm not sure the exact process, but it gives it more, more of these little pores, a, a bigger surface area for the, the stuff to go through, meaning that it's going to catch more stuff and it's going to last longer because once this once stuff starts going through this charcoal it's going to catch stuff and it's going to end up getting clogged up so there's a a certain lifetime so to speak for the the charcoal filter itself so just keep that in mind with the charcoal it, you know you don't just take chunks of charcoal and throw it in there you can but you want to you want to grind some up the finer and the more packed it is the more resistance to the water um, is is going to clean out more of that stuff so to speak so now there are some filters that you can use uh, to make at home. There's the Berkey filter and you can make your, your homemade version of the Berkey filter. And this is nothing against Berkey. I think they're fantastic filters and, and we even have one of these in the house. But um, you can take one of these replacement filters from Berkey or wherever you can find a filter. And like this image here, you can take two five gallon buckets, put a spigot on the bottom and take one of these filters. And I'm gonna do a video how to do this in the future. Um, because it's, and I'll put it on this course because it's just a really good idea and a low cost idea when you, when you think about some of these filters, but instead of, you know, you don't use the, the sand and pebbles and all that, I suppose you could, but what I'm going to do is like this and I'm going to use, you know, either a Berkey filter, a replacement filter or some kind of filter. And you just drill a hole in that top bucket on the bottom of that top bucket where the water passes through that filter. And then the, the bottom bucket is then purified water or clean water. And then you've got a spigot where you can take that water out. Pretty neat idea. And I'm going to do a video here in the near future about that if it's not all on already. Um, but a really cool idea and a low cost way to do it. And I'll let you know how much it costs me for the supplies and all of that and the price difference. So pretty good idea. Next, we have the field expedient water filters and I, I kind of went through what the process is for some of these but these are things where once you understand how filtering works you can kind of think about different ways in the wilderness or in an urban area wherever you are the different supplies you might be able to find to help build a filter you know in an urban area you might have two liter bottles you might have plastic and stuff like that laying around in the wilderness you might not so you might need to to, to find some tree bark maybe and then get some grass and and build one of these cone filters like this here to filter that water um, again in it, when you're using a filter like this it's not going to be it's not going to catch all the stuff that it, one of these store bought filters would would catch and you know having these these primitive skills is great but if we have the option to have these these store bought supplies that we have access to today you know we we might as well use them because they do work great the iodine tablets and all of that stuff 
Uh, but we, we need to know how to do this stuff just in case that we don't have any of that stuff. And we need to kind of go our own. You know, we have to filter our water and we have to f figure out how to do that with the supplies around us. In an urban area, you might have some cloth, you might have some rope um, or any kind of cordage laying around that you could fashion one of these out of. You kind of think like MacGyver. In the wilderness situation, you still have to think like MacGyver, but you only have the tools that Mother Nature offers for you. So that's, you know, basically a field expedient water filter. But there are other kind of filters as well. You've got, you've got, you know, you can dig a hole, which is kind of terra filtering, which meaning that, you know, if you've got a river that's really contaminated or a stagnant water source, just it's been pooling and can tell that it's not moving and animals, there's kind of animal feces all around it or something, you might want to dig a hole a little further away from that water source, but below the water line. And the water will, the, the ground itself will kind of filter that water out for you. And then it'll give you a cleaner source of water. This, this should still be boiled because it's just going through the dirt and all of that. But, um, you know, it'll give you a cleaner water source to choose from. Or you can do that like this teepee tp filter which is basically the same process as the two liter bottle filter or the pant leg filter you've got your grass on top which catches a lot of the stuff and it, it's held up by a bandana or some kind of cloth and then the next level is the sand so that as that water travels down it goes through the grass and it goes through the sand and then it goes through the charcoal finally at the end and like i said the charcoal being as as fine as you can get it um, will will increase that surface area and when you're using these kind of filters too, it's important to remember that you might have to dump the the first couple of you know couple of passes through these filters because they're still going to have the charcoal and all the sediment and all that stuff. And then after that, it'll get a little bit cleaner. But if you have a, a large amount of water to choose from, you have that option. If you don't, you need to think about, hey, I can't afford to throw a quart of water away. There's also a way to collect water with, you know, maybe in an urban area or maybe you have your tarp with you. You can wrap a tarp around a tree, a, a tree branch. And in the mornings that that dew collects and, and you can get that caught in that baggie. There's also methods where you can tie some cloth around your feet. And in the early mornings, you walk through the weeds or the brush and that water will collect on that cloth you have around your knee or your knees, your feet or your ankles. And then you can wring that water out and that'll give you drinking water. And it's a lot easier than going from plant to plant, kind of washing them off. But uh, a lot of different ways to do it. You just need to kind of think about where that water is and how you're going to get that water. So that's, that's basically it for this video. Um, you know, there's a lot of different ways. We just need to practice some of this stuff. Like I said, just because we're practicing these primitive skills doesn't mean it's not a good idea to maybe have an Aquamira filter or a Sawyer mini filter is the one I have. I also have a Life Straw. It's always a good idea to have these there, but they don't last forever. And, and that's what we have to remember. You can't, you don't know really when your filter is working or not because you can't see all these. Like right there, we have a, a picture of cryptosporidium. You can't see these little nasties in there. So, you know, if you, you won't really know when your water filter is not working or not. And a lot of these have a different lifetime, and you'll have to look at how many, you know, quarts or whatever liters of water they can filter. But we need to keep in mind that these don't last forever. So uh, learning these these other skills, and these are fun to practice too when you're, when you're up camping or, or even just in your backyard. You know, practice doing these and seeing how you can do it and see, you know, I don't know that I would, I would drink water unless it's absolutely, unnecess or absolutely necessary uh, without boiling it. But, you know, filter this water, boil it, see how it tastes, you know, see what you're, see what you're kind of in for. So with that, I think we're done with this video, everyone. Um, I appreciate it, and we'll see you in the next video.